Are you looking for a slim wallet and want to find out which one suits you best? If so, you've come to the right place. We have reviewed 10 of the most popular models, and you'll get all the information and results here in this video. So just stay tuned. Let's get started with our comparison of the slim wallets. This time we've tested 10 products and as usual, we'll give you an overview of the main differences. Included in this video, two wallets in a card case style with a frame, two with an aluminum card case, two seemingly basic wallets, which have a better allocation of space and are therefore smaller, two so-called magic wallets. And last but not least, we have two that are somehow a mix of all the different wallets. You can find the links to the products below the video in the description. And if you want to find out more details about one of the wallets, check out our individual reviews, which you can find in the description as well. Let's start with equipment and technology. First, let's talk about the measurements, which are of course extremely important for such products. After all, it has to be small and thin, otherwise it wouldn't be a slim wallet. In terms of length and width, the wallets with card cases are the most popular. These include the iClip and the Snap Wallet in particular. Only the Nanoboy Pocket performs a little better, but that's about it. After all, a slim wallet has to be at least as big as a debit card any less, and it wouldn't fit. Unfortunately, the so-called magic wallets take up a particularly large amount of space. This is due to a trick these wallets use in order to store away your money, which does take up quite a bit of space in the end. However, these wallets can be quite thin, as the Flatboy Slim from Jamie Jacobs shows. With a depth of just one centimeter, this wallet is thinner than any other we reviewed. However, if you're looking for the best compromise between length, width, and depth, the iClip is still the top dog though. What you naturally ask yourself is, how does the iClip achieve this? And unfortunately, the answer is, by leaving out a lot. Most slim wallets that manage to be particularly slim do not achieve this through some magical trick, but by limiting themselves to the essentials. Accordingly, the iClip has neither an integrated compartment for coins or notes. Yes, there is a money clip instead, and yes, you can buy a coin case separately, but it is essentially a card holder and not a complete wallet. If you're not big on cash, this may be the perfect wallet for you. And admittedly, there is a growing trend towards paying by card. But what about people who want to reduce the size of their wallet, but still don't want to dismiss all its conveniences? The following illustration may interest you. Here we have shown which of the wallets have a bill or coin compartment, and which do not. Of course, most wallets do have some different versions. So take a look at our individual reviews. There we'll give you an overview of what's available. You'll find everything in the video description below. For our review, however, we follow up on the variants that we have here right before us. And in the end, our impression is mixed. However, if you take a closer look, you will ultimately find three wallets that have both a full-fledged bill and a coin compartment. These include the Don Bolso Wallety Next Gen, the Boar's Prime Maxis one, and the Van Heesen Slim Wallet. All three are average in terms of their measurements and are therefore perfectly acceptable. However, we have to devalue the Boar's Wallet somewhat, as it cannot keep up with most other wallets, particularly in terms of the number of cards it can hold. The iClip, Nanoboy, and Magic Wallets in particular simply offer more options here. Boar's suffers due to a problem, which wallets with a card case typically have. These are quite limited, and usually only hold up to six cards. The advantage, on the other hand, is that these cases are made of aluminum, and therefore offer protection against unwanted NFC transactions. But from the ground up, NFC stands for Near Field Communication, and is used to enable contactless payment at card terminals. However, it must be said that the vast majority of slim wallets already have an integrated protection against such criminal activities, or that it can at least be upgraded using an RFID blocking card. The bottom line is that the Boar's wallet falls short, meaning that the Don Bolso Wallet Next Gen and the Van Heesen Slim Wallet come out on top in terms of features and technology. Sufficient space, protection against NFC transactions, a high level of convenience thanks to the bill and coin compartments and the relatively small measurements are the decisive factors here. On the other hand, those who have already moved away from cash could consider an iClip as well as the Flatboy Slim from Jamie Jacobs, which also appears to be an interesting alternative, especially if you're looking for something a little more uncommon. And as a reminder, you can find the links to the individual tests and the products in the description below the video. 
We have also linked accessories such as the RFID blocking card for you there. And if the video was helpful to you, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel. So much for some general information about the Slim wallets. Now let's see what our colleague Remo has to say. He has put the individual wallets to the test for us and gained a lot of experience in the process. If you are interested in a slim wallet, but don't have any experience in that regard, you'll naturally have a few questions. For example, question number one, do the cards get scratches faster in my slim wallet compared to a conventional and normal wallet? At this point, we need to make a distinction. On the one hand, we have the models with individual card slots. This means that you can put one card in each slot. In addition, these slots are also lined with a soft material. This means that your cards are protected from scratches. On the other hand, we have the models which hold all cards in one compartment altogether. Every time I take a card out, they rub against each other and this creates small and fine scratches, over time of course. However, in our opinion, these little scratches won't make your card useless. The second question is, how quickly will I get used to my new slim wallet? In my opinion, you get used to it within three weeks at the most, regardless of the model. I'm convinced of that. However, there are differences. I would like to mention two variants that are as far apart as they can be. The first one is the slim wallet from Don Bolso. I would say that you won't need any time to get used to this wallet. Generally speaking, it's a conventional and normal wallet, but everything is designed smaller, much more efficient and thus smarter. The only thing you have to get used to is simply reducing the amount of stuff you put in it. Apart from that, you can carry all your change, paper money and cards as usual. On the other hand, we have a wallet which needs a lot of getting used to, namely, the eye clip. Everything here is different. All the cards are stacked on top of each other in one compartment. We no longer have a compartment for banknotes, rather we just have a clip which used to hold your paper money. On top of that, we even have to completely do without a way of carrying any small change. So in the end, I would say that people who find this a bit difficult or annoying will perhaps need three weeks, but they should definitely get used to this wallet after some time. And the third question is, are the contents of my wallet protected from falling out? On the whole, you can say that the wallets don't actually make any major mistakes and nothing falls out. So, in the vast majority of everyday situations, the contents are pretty well protected from falling out. However, I have two examples that I would like to mention where things are not quite so optimal. The first is the slim wallet from Secret. We have a nice, sturdy aluminum case here, in which the cards are pretty secure. But it is also wrapped in a fairly soft leather cover. You can also put cards in here, and that brings me to the following point. Money should be folded, and then put in here. If the wallet is now placed in a larger bag, a backpack or a shopping bag, for instance, it can move freely. Therefore, there is a chance that it will unfold, and your money may slip out. It's not as bad as long as this happens in your bag. Still, could be better. On the other hand, we also have an example where things can be a little less favorable in everyday life. And that would be with the Bohr's model. In our review, we actually found out that there is a major inconvenience if you hold it upside down. For example, simple quick movements like this are enough for the cards to start sliding out. If you make even faster and stronger movements, the entire stack may spread out on the floor. So if you are trying to catch up to the ice cream truck with your wallet in your hand, you may not get the ice cream because you have to pick up your cards and money first. I can't imagine whether that's the intention or not. I think we've simply got a model where something has gone wrong. But aside from this case, you can basically say that the contents of the individual wallets are pretty well secured. In addition to the handling, we also looked at the wallets in terms of the comfort they provide. This is where the measurements, which we mentioned at the beginning, come into play again. The smaller and thinner the wallet is, the easier it goes on your pockets. However, an additional criterion here is the weight of the wallet, which of course should be as small as possible. And who would have thought, the eye clip not only scores points for its measurements, but also for its weight, closely followed by the Nanoboy pocket, and, surprisingly, the Wallety Next Gen from Don Bolso. 41 grams for a pretty much fully functional wallet? Not bad. However, the Don Bolso is a little more bulky than the eye clip and the like when worn, so you can't have everything, although it has to be said that the wallet itself is comfortable to wear. To be fair, however, none of the wallets we reviewed made a particularly bad impression. The vast majority of them are comfortable. As is so often the case, opinions may differ when it comes to looks. Card case models appear minimalistic and simple, 
and somehow bring a kind of some astonishment with them. You could get an impression like, oh boy, that's really small. Slightly larger variants, such as the magic wallets, seem a bit more rounded, and in our opinion, more stylish. Badges, such as those on the Gento or Travando, look classy, and at least give the impression of higher quality. However, in fact, it is precisely these two wallets that are made of imitation leather. We don't have anything against imitation leather, but we can't shake the feeling that there is a bit of whitewashing going on here. After all, all the other wallets are made of real leather. In terms of workmanship, however, they all did quite well in the end. The leather or imitation leather generally made a clean impression, and the stitches also looked neat. Only here and there were a few small inconveniences, such as the stitching on the backside of the snap, or the scratch-prone leather on the Don Bolso. Admittedly, the Don Bolso is available in different versions, so you can simply choose one with a different leather finish. Nevertheless, such conspicuous features should also be mentioned here. All in all, despite the final criticism, it is the Don Bolso Wallety Next Gen that convinced us in our review, although it might be better to order the carbon leather version. The Van Heesen also scored quite well, but we would recommend a different version here as well, namely the one with a press stud instead of an elastic band. Otherwise, the iClip and the Flatboy Slim are still among the interesting alternatives. We have checked the Slim wallets in our comparison in detail, and the bottom line is that none of them really failed. All of them scored at least above 8 in our evaluation, so there isn't much room for complaints. Nevertheless, we would like to present our winners here. First place goes to the Don Bolso Wallety Next Gen, which is relatively small and yet hardly lacks any amenities. Second place goes to the Van Heesen Slim Wallet, which only lags behind the Don Bolso in a few minor details, such as weight. Coming in third, we have the iClip as well as the Flatboy Slim from Jamie Jacobs, which share that spot. So, we've checked out these wallets for you, if there's one that particularly interests you. Take a look at the video description below. We have linked all the products there for you, including our individual reviews. Aside from that, I would be delighted if you would stay tuned and check out our video suggestions in the end card.